What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back as we continue along. Um, got a little bit of a fever today, so this episode may be a little bit shorter, but I didn't want to have nothing going up on the channel. So, took a hot shower, took some, uh, some Dayquil, and we're going to push through a little bit. Uh, so we are now a necromancy build. I put on a, a death grave scythe, because why not? Uh, necromancy pulls from Int and Faith, so the exact same armor is, is completely fine. I could swap over and do this one, add some Faith and Dex, but I, I think this is fine. We're still getting the, the FP cost of incantations reduced. I don't know if I have, like, a Deathly set. Uh, but anyway, tons of different spells, so I've grabbed grabbed a bunch. We'll try them on out as we make our way to the Lake of Rot. I think this one is my debuff. It's my debuff. See, Tibia's summons is still one of the worst spells in the game. Anyway, let's actually take a look at some of the spells we have on. Talk about what we got here. Uh, so, this one is going to be a mist. Charging enhances the range. Of course, the Tibia summons Blighted Armament, putting Death Blight. As a reminder, Death Blight doesn't cause death now, it reduces resistances. Uh, we have Ranker Call. Lingering Blight on impact, it curses the enemy, causing constant buildup for 30 seconds. That's pretty good. Rally the Legion. Increase the damage of all summons and allies by 10% and increase their defense. Also, as HP recovery to all summons and allies lasts for one minute. Do I have any summons? Summons. Maybe they mean like Ashen summons? Uh, makes the caster immune to Spirit Summon debuff and adds 8 stamina recovery. Okay, so I think we're supposed to use our Ashen summons and then we use Rally the Legion to buff them. We have Ancient Death Rancor. Instantly kill your summon minions. When they die, you recover all health, FP, and stamina points. And then you get a buff that increases your absorption and holy damage by 10% for 30 seconds. And then this, lower the absorption, 10% holy damage over time. So some interesting stuff. I will say this this class doesn't, uh, doesn't strike me as being as powerful as some of the, the other classes. Tell you what, though, that damage over time is pretty impressive. I think part of what made the Necromancer so cool the last time we played this was the fact that you had you had a full-on summon. And that's, you know, it's a mechanic that we already have in Elden Ring, but you didn't have that uh, mechanically in, in Dark Souls 3. So summoning up, like, like Aldrich is accursed and having a fight for you, that was super cool. Whereas here, it definitely doesn't have the same effect. It's like, oh, yeah, I got my summon. Okay. It's like, eh, whatever. It's here, but it doesn't, it doesn't excite, it does not inspire joy. The actual damage over time is quite impressive. I'd say that's comparable to uh, what we are doing with our with our uh, Black Flame build. Pretty good. But so far, it's, I'm like, eh. Eh. I know someone was asking, um, well, not asking, but they mentioned that there's certain spells you only get from bosses, like the Plassey Nuke you can get. So we'll, we'll save that for, like, one of the last builds, since Plassey is obviously all the way over where, uh, where Dude is. Malaketh. 
All right, let's actually, I just put on a bunch of spells. Let me, let me play smart here. So, um, let's see. Lingering Blight. We're going to put that on. We're going to do Lingering Blight. I'm going to do the Armament. Ranker Call for a Fast. I'm not working with Summons. That doesn't seem that good anyway. Um, immune to Spirit Summon debuff and adds 8 Stamina Recovery. Ancient Death Rancor. It's the bigger Rancor. Now, let me, let me actually... Let me put the bigger one first. Single vengeful bolt that quickly seeks out an enemy. So, a speedy bolt. Projectile and an arc towards an enemy cause an explosion of ghost flame. Explosion of death blight. Rancor storm. Rip an enemy's soul from the body as a projectile that moves towards the caster. Enemy instantly becomes stunned. The souls absorb. The caster becomes drained of all stamina. <laughs> There's so many HP. What? The caster is affected by the Phoenix of Death sorcery. This will replenish Death Ward. Alright, we're gonna skip on that for now. Instead, we'll do. Holy damage and frostbite build up. When someone affected by it goes from everybody's dies, causes a large explosion. It's kind of cool. Let's do that. We went we went for more of a, a cast heavy. So we'll try we'll try the, the more cast heavy necromancy type things. I don't know if a uh, dude's gonna be here to fight us because we didn't do that quest line. I feel like he he shows up regardless, but I guess we'll find out in just a second, won't we? Anybody? No? I, mean, I don't remember seeing the Ronnie doll. It's okay, I would have blown him up. We're almost at the late rot, which is what we wanted. different environment. Oh, so close. That's okay. I would have just gotten more FP. Oh, I wonder... Well, we got this. Let's go check out over here. Oh, teleporter. Where the teleporter takes me. Uh, let's see. Ancient Death Rancor. How much damage? Well, 61. Okay. Regular Rancor. Quite respectable. Six sixty set four. Very fast. Just flame cannon. Ooh, I like that. Found our uh, AoE move. Bam. Sombers are always needed. Wave of Corruption. Eh. I mean, it's a large area, but the fact that it's... I don't know. Lots of death. Silver rapier. Let's go here. Where do you take me? Oh, 
Oh, it's kind of neat. Oh, look at that. There's like a a rata rataceum. Get it? Like a coliseum, but for rot, a rataceum. I'll tell you what, though, man. It's funny. I guarantee there's going to be somebody in the comments that's like, man, cowboys all be sick. And it's like, man, y'all don't get it. I used to be, like, so healthy all the time. I would never get sick. And then I had two kids. And now it's, like, sick. Constantly sick. Every, literally, like, once a month, my ass is getting sick with something. People don't understand, man. Kids are just, they're, they're just, like, little disease vectors. Like, the younger ones especially, because they just straight up crawl around on the floor. And then all them germs, they're just like, Mmm, daddy. They slap it all over your face. And the little one will just touch whatever and then put his hands in his mouth, the toddler. I will say this, uh, immunity to rot talisman does make this kind of a cakewalk. That's the thing, man. It's like, before, before I had kids, I was... Like, never sick. I would get sick maybe once a year. And that shit took, like, three days. Or if I did get sick, it was, like, something bad. Like, my ass came down with, like, shingles once. I don't even know how I got shingles. I was, like, 26. Or going to the, uh, minute clinic. And I was like, I think I got shingles. And the lady, like, laughed it off. She's like, that's highly uncommon for someone your age. But let's take a look. And then I took off my shirt. And she's like, oh, that's, that's shingles. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, asshole. Who would have thought? Not that hard to identify the rash that only goes across half of your body exactly. Ow! Damn, it takes a long time to get that off. That's a cool change to them. See, the only thing that doesn't make sense to me is, like, you'd think, constantly being sick, that my immune system would be, like, a giga chat at this point. That doesn't matter, man. Like, to be fair, I'm never, I'm never sick for long. I'll get, like, you know, by, within, like, 48 hours, I'll be completely fine. I'll also, like, sweat out a fever, and then it's gone, but... So, of course, it's, like, you know, right while I'm doing hour-long episodes, and on top of the Diablo 4 launch, and it's just, like... You just really couldn't come at a worse time, could you? But I think I've been doing good, doing, uh, taking care of myself. Had some, uh, had a panini for lunch. Had some chicken noodle soup. After I get this episode done, I'm gonna take, like, a nap before I stream. I've took the kids to spend time at her mom, just so I don't, I don't get the youngest one sick. The toddler, he's probably already going to be sick. I'm pretty sure I got this from him. But what's weird is when my toddler's had just, like, straight nose issue. Like, he's had, like, post nasal drip for, like, days. Just constant boogies. And my shit's like a sore throat. I'm like, what the fuck? But who knows? I certainly don't. I was like, what the hell? Cannon! Goodbye. 
Only 1,200. It was ancient. I feel like ancient wasn't that far behind that. Okay, so it is it is stronger by a good amount. Also, the FP cost on this stuff is quite nice. It's very low. Oh, God. Maybe I'm going to put that thing back on. Where's it at? There it is. Virtual the Ghost Flame. We haven't tried this one yet. Large scale AoE. Yeah, damage is kind of mid. That's a, like, the damage, like, the damage there is okay, but for, like, the, the time to kill, you know, like, that thing is floating in the air for, ow, oh, you got me for sure, bro. No, you don't. Ow, bro, stop. No. Like that should have been like boom, boom, boom. And instead, it's like I like guess it's a long, it's a long time to pull that off. build is mid. Damn, all the way back. So I got some of the other spells here. So this is more boss shit, debuff and buff. So we got Ranker Storm with 43, you're 29, you're 18. The cannon was good for some AoE. Causing to increase all weapon damage 10%, I'll absorb by 20%, reduce FP by 90%, effect never exp No, bro, why would I want this? Like, uh, ask the spell to toggle it, increase the damage of all death sorcery by 10%, grants 3 FP regeneration per second, increases absorption by 60%. Casting this sorcery will grant a death ward effect to the caster. Death ward will prevent the caster from dying one time, and then death ward will be consumed. Soul Steel Sorcery will replenish the Death Ward effect. The caster is affected by Phoenix of Death, but Death Ward is not currently active. So, damage, 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 AoE. Big AoE. And then I do this with Soul Steel. Oh. I think I. So as long as Soul Steel kills somebody, 
I am unkillable. I believe that's that's my understanding if I'm reading this right. Oh god. What the hell? Wait, 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 what? Alright, I'm I'm severely misunderstanding something. I like my stamina what the hell what even just happened? <laughs> Like he's staggered. I need to look at these again. Damage by 10%. FP regeneration. Absorption down by 60. Okay. Rip away an enemy's soul from their body as a projectile that moves towards the caster. The enemy is instantly stunned. When the soul is absorbed, the caster becomes drained of all stamina for a few seconds and loses all remaining FP. The caster is affected by death, Phoenix of Death, the spell replenish, death ward effect. Oh. Huh. So the whole the whole thing is if my if my Phoenix has procced. I can use that to replenish my Phoenix effect and get my health back. But in exchange for doing that, I'm going to bottom out my FP and my stamina. That's the trade-off for essentially cheating death a second time. Not sure how I feel about that. I think we can just run through. A lot of these enemies aren't even that uh, threatening. I say as I take an arrow to the chest. Damn, y'all like that? that? Ultra Instinct dodge? I'm gonna have to kill that or it's gonna- it's gonna kill me. No more songs. Oh, oh no, damn it. Second one.
I will say the stagger potential of that seems pretty good since it's performing a multi hit. It's like boom, 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 boom. Is there a thing to step on in here? Hey, buddy. I mean, it's glad I came down here. I'm finding a lot of Colossals. I haven't found those prior to now. Got that. Sniper Ghost Elite over here. I guess I go this way and I keep looking for things to interact with. There's a chest here. I think that's Ritual Ghost Flame, that's meant to be my, um, meant to be my boss killer, probably. Get underneath the boss, drop that out, boom, 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 boom. I don't think I would play Necromancy long term if only for the fact that I can cast my spell and then it's faster for me to run up to the target and smack them with my sight than it is for the actual spell I cast to hit the target and deal damage to him. That's that's pretty goofy. Like I get it's a slower spell, but like damn. Let's let's you know. Let me speed this up a little bit here. Let me go hit this thing first, I guess. That certainly works out. I was taking the long way up. I'm not that worried about it. We're we're looking good on levels anyway. So it looks like I need to that looks all clogged up. I mean I could we have we have that grace. Let me go look. Actually that looks like I would die dropping down. We have to take the ladder down. The Coliseum is still throwing me off. I feel like there's supposed to be like a big uh Oh no, there definitely is. Look at this. This this trails around to enter the Coliseum. Let's go take a look over here and then we'll fast travel. I'm guessing you probably need to clear the Coliseum to proceed ahead. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me get closer. Maybe it's like a, you gotta hop up and down the stuff. No, definitely not. My guess is you you clear the Colosseum and then the roots withdraw. I wonder if it's some kind of like the rotten guardian of the uh, tree or some bullshit like that. Scythe looks cool, very edgy. Go this way first. I don't know 
if we're gonna go the full hour for this episode, because like, I'm already feeling it. I wanna, as I'm still supposed to, supposed to stream Diablo for launch. So the hope is I'm gonna take a nap, load all the covers on myself, and hope I can just sweat and uh, break the fever for whatever the hell is going on. That's usually anytime I feel like this. That's what happens. I just sweat it out, and then it's like, pop, I'm better. And the first thing that returns is my appetite. I'm like, I need to fucking eat everything. I need the entire world of cheeseburgers at the moment. Nope, he's gonna smack me. Come on, man. Can you just, like, stand still for a second? I want to see... What kind of big damage I could do if you were to completely ignore me and just give me free reign to murder you? Yeah, I'd say that's uh, that's pretty good. Bye. It definitely took a minute to get it off, but when it went off, whoo, man. The thing is, I would, I would bet that probably only works on, like, the biggest of Chungus's, you know, like, guys like him. We already got that anyway, but whatever. Like something I loot on this. No, I guess it's just an alternative path up, maybe. Hmm. It's really cool though. I'm liking this a lot. Though I will say, if I didn't have the like you're immune to all rot damage amulet, I don't know how. Like that fight would have sucked. That would have been big time suck. And it doesn't look like the roots have pulled. Oh. Almost, almost tripped and fell a long way down. And no, the roots are still in position. So there's got to be something I do this way to get around it, I'd assume. Hello. Eutrification. Rangering Blight. Rancor Storm. Vancouver Storm number two. I'm dead. It's tanky. Oh, <laughs> that might count. He might stay dead. I don't think I'll get the runes for him, but. It's funny. Let's see, did you respawn? Uh, yes, you did. Okay, so you are a proper like mini boss, not just. Well, no, you're just an elite, not a mini boss. Is what I meant to say. We're gonna be extra cheeky for a second. I think it worked. I was busy turned away, but I think he just attacked straight off the cliff ledge and killed himself. Expensive, but quite nice. I just realized, I guess, um... Phoenix of Death does not work on, uh, on gravity-related deaths. That makes sense. You could negate out 
all gravity damage, you could do some really funky shit. Hmm. That looks like it might be the way I go. What's over here? I think I'm going to need the rot thing back on. I know I said this episode wasn't going to be an hour, but I'm gonna we're going to get through the Lake of Rot. I'm going to explore this. I'm just not going to... I'm not going to push myself for it to be longer, just because I feel like a dookie. Right, so I can go back this way. Yeah, you should stop. Um, I mean, dude would respawn, but I'm kind of... Screw it. I'm just curious what's down there. So it looks like it connects, but not quite. Man, that's risky business. Um, what did you have down here? Maybe I need to kill them to get that chest open. Hmm. I'm not sure. We killed the dude. I figured that would have uh, that would have done it. I'm also not sure what that thing did. It probably like raised up a. Um, there's, there's probably a platform that was raised where I'm supposed to do the fight. That would make the most sense. I'm just going to let this guy follow me and he'll probably fall off a ledge. It is kind of a cool buff, the idea that you're going to cheat death. It's just very, very tricky to use that because, you know, obviously you can you leave yourself exposed and you have no stamina. You can't run. You can't dodge. Hmm. The dreamer gear. It's probably rot. Faith and Arcane, FP cost of incantations and increased damage of Mystic. It's a Mystic set. Okay, well, we still don't know how the hell to get through that. That's the that's the thing that's really got me stumped. That might be jumpable, and that would allow me to, to get past. It might be the case that there's a, a thing out in the 
somewhere out in the map is a thingy that when I hit it, it, it raises up a, a bridge that I can use. But right now, I don't have that. Because that bridge would take me over to there to get me over, but there's nothing connecting the two of those. I mean, to be fair, we go past this and it's going to bring us to a stone, who I've already done, so... Not like there's that much left uh, in this area, regardless. Uh, we cleared deep root depths, so... I mean, I am kind of curious how, how Millennia... It doesn't make sense to me that Millennia and Plassey are tiered the same as the Arc Dragon. That really doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't know. I also know Fortisax is lurking around somewhere out here, like the bitch he is, so... I think this one's close to him, if I remember. Um, we're gonna wrap things up here, though, with the Lake of Rot done. In the next episode, we're gonna be an entirely new build once again. Necro, honestly, kind of just, eh. I mean, to be fair, I didn't use the summons, and I know that's, you know, the whole thing with the build, but at the same time, I feel like, oh, I'm just buffing my Ashen Summon. Like, that's not... I don't know. That doesn't entertain me the same way that, you know, I'm summoning up a Bone Wheel like I did in Dark Souls 3. That was that was really fun. Just, you know, putting a, a buff on my... You know, being a necromancer and be like, from the depths comes Caden Cell Sword. Fight for me. Like, it's not the same. It's not the same. You know, Caden, my spirit jellyfish. No, not the same vibe. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll work off of Necro. We're gonna be doing a a respec. As for what we're gonna go for next, I'm not sure. I know y'all said there's some, some dragons that I should take out before I do this. We get two more dragon spells, so I'll keep an eye out for them. Uh, we could go Blood Flame since we're gonna make our way into the capital. There's a lot of those, so that would be a full hour, possibly two. Um, Frozen Lightning still. And the other arcane build. So we have a couple different things we can do. Maybe I'll I'll go um Cragbolt, Frozen Lightning next, since we we just finished up the guy that I technically would have gotten the final Cragbolt from. So either way, stay tuned and I will have more of the convergence coming your way.